Thank you very much, uh, I'm, I'm Marcel. Really glad to be here. And there's uh, no better use of our time uh, than than talking to youth around the world, uh, which is what I absolutely love to do. So I want to share some wisdom and tell you how I gained it. Um, I So by trade, I'm a software engineer. That's uh, what I studied and that's what I, I got a degree in. And, and I did all that because my parents told me if you get an engineering degree, you could get a good job. But I didn't just want a good job. I actually wanted a good life. And I wanted to do more things than just engineering. And so at a point in my life, I'm going to just share one story with you and tell you the wisdom I learned from it. Um, the music industry, I love music. 24-7, I'm singing, even though I actually can't sing, it doesn't stop me. Um, always have a song in my ear and in my heart. And I love being around music and going to concerts and shows. And one day I was at a concert when I was young, and there was uh, somebody that came out on stage and it was an Elton John concert, and there were 30,000 people there. And this gentleman came out on stage, and he said, are you people ready to rock? And everybody was screaming. And I said to my friends that I was with the concert with, I said, who's that guy? And they said, well, he's the promoter. This is his concert. He's the one who's bringing us this music tonight. And I said, I want to be that guy. And all my friends laughed at me. They're like, dude, you'll never be that guy. You're a software engineer. You're a programmer, right? And you know, it's never going to happen. And I remember sitting there and thinking to myself, how could that happen? Is there any way that I could make that happen? And I started trying to reach out a little bit to people in the music industry, but I got nowhere. Every door was closed. And so the wisdom that I gained, I want, that is what I want to share with you, is whatever. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I wound up figuring out a way to get in. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. And what I discovered was that Whatever you want to do in your life and wherever you want to be, the key to success for getting anywhere, for me, it was getting on that stage at the concert. Um, the key to success is that you have to become valuable to the people in the world that you want to be around. So I, I want all the young people listening to this to think about that. Ask yourself this, where is some place you want to be in life? Right at that moment, mine was on stage producing a concert. Yours might be sitting in a fashion show. It might be working for the European Space Agency. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's yours. There's some place in the world that you would love to be that you can see yourself in the future and you want to be there. And what, what I, the whole reason I, I wanted to be part of this when Marcelo called me is I want you to know that no one can stop you from going anywhere you want to go in the world if you do these things. This is my simple formula, because everybody told me, no, it's never going to happen, and you're never going to be in the music industry, because you're just some kid from a small town with a single mother, no money, uh, and you're an engineer anyway. You're not a music person. So that key is figure out the people you want to be valuable to, which for me was people in the music industry, these recording artists and musicians, and then I started thinking, what's the formula? How do you become valuable to people? You become valuable to people by solving a problem that they have. That's the key. You gotta become valuable, and you do that by solving a problem that they have that they're worried about. So the next question is, how do I find a problem to solve for the people that I wanna be around in the world? So I started thinking about that, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna have to figure out what problems they have. So when you pick the industry that you dream of being in, then you're going to create value by solving a problem that, that people need solved. What your goal is, is to become the go-to guy or the go-to girl that people call because they need you. They need you because you have something they don't. What you have is the solution to a problem that they need solved. So you know what I did? A simple formula that any of you can do. I began, I stayed up night, late at night, right? Whether it's doing your schoolwork during the day or later when you have a job during your job during the day, when I was done with all of my work, I stayed up extra in the evening or on weekends and I researched the industry I wanted to be in. I studied the music business. 
I Googled every article I could Google about concert production and tour production, because my dream was someday to be on stage producing a concert and bringing music to people around the world. And my other dream was to go on tour. One time I saw some uh, musicians on TV waving goodbye and I was telling my friends, where are they going? My friends are like, well, they're going on tour. And I remember saying, I wanna go on tour. And again, my friends are like, dude, you're an engineer, you're a software guy, you don't play music, you're never gonna be on a tour bus. So again, I remembered thinking, not with that attitude, I'm not. So remember guys, the first part to, is that your attitude determines your outcome. I never listened to all those people telling me no. Instead, I thought there might be a way to do this and I'm gonna figure it out. So that's what I'm sharing with you now. So I studied the music industry and I started making a list of the problems they have to solve. What does it take to produce a concert? What does it take to set up a music tour? And what you do, and again, here's my little secret formula for you guys. What you do is you study an industry and you get out a blank sheet of paper and you make a list of all the problems that that industry needs to solve every day. So here's what I wrote down. In the music industry, somebody has to sing the songs, right? Well, that's not me, okay? Somebody has to write the songs, that's not me. Somebody dances, you definitely don't wanna see that, not me. Um, but there were a lot of other things when I started writing down what it takes the business problems to solve in music. And that included somebody has to produce, meaning they have to write a business proposal for a concert or a tour, and they have to raise the money for it. And I was like, wait a minute, I know how to do that. I know how to write business proposals, and I know how to talk to investors and raise money. That's a skill that I have. Then I was writing down other things like choreography, more things I can't do. You list all the problems that have to be solved in the industry you want to be in, then you cross off all the ones you can't do. But there was another one I could circle that I could do. Somebody has to go out and market and promote a concert or a tour. If we have a concert Friday night, we need to fill up all the seats. I'm really good at marketing and promotions. And I was like, wait, I can do that. So I circled the things that I can do. By the way, if you cross everything off and there's nothing you could solve to help, then you gave it a shot, time to look for something else to do. But I discovered that I could solve some of the problems. Now, the next step is reach out to people in that industry. So I'm telling you, I didn't know anybody in the music industry, but when I was studying it, here's another little trick. What I discovered was when you start studying an industry, I found this magazine, just as an example, it was called Polestar, never heard of it in my life. It's the magazine of the concert and tour industry. It was $12, so I bought it. And the magazine I never heard of, and I started reading all the articles that were written by people who produce concerts and tours. But you know what else is cool? At the end of every article, online and offline, is usually the name and email address of the person that wrote it. So I started cold emailing people. You have to be brave when you're going after what you want in the world. And I started asking people, Hey, my name's Jeff. I'm really interested in music. Um, I'd love to learn more any way you would talk with me. And the good news is, well, even though nine out of 10 people will never even answer you, or they'll just say no. The 10th one, people like to talk about their work. So every once in a while, someone would say, sure, give me a call. And I would get on the phone and I would talk to people in the industry and I would learn from them. And you know what they would do? They would say, I appreciate your enthusiasm for the industry you should talk to my friend, Mary, and they would connect you to somebody else in the industry. And pretty soon I started learning more and I was asking them, what are the problems you most need help with in this industry? And they said, well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. And again, I'm just using music as an example, guys, for this equation for how to live your own epic life and do what you want to do. When I was asking them, they were saying every musician, every singer wants to perform but guess what? They're singers, not business people, and they don't know how to write a proposal for a concert. It turns out that even the world's biggest singers, Beyonce, pick one, they don't produce the concert. Somebody calls them and says, I'm a concert producer. I'd like to hire you to sing. And I said, well, I bet I could do that. They said, we don't know how to produce these, and there's way more singers and bands than there are people that know how to write business proposals round up financing, promote and market a concert. So I said, I can learn that. So that's what I started studying. And then when I had something people in the music industry wanted, 
I knew how to put together a proposal and market a concert, get the money for the concert, and then fill up the seats. So all of a sudden, now some of you may be too young to know some of these names, um, but at the time we did this, all of a sudden we were producing concerts uh, with Elton John. We put together a tour back then uh, that was Beyonce. We did uh, tours with Britney Spears. We did tours with Justin Timberlake and NSYNC. And then later I wound up working with people. I just remember a day, for example, that I got a phone call uh, from Christina Aguilera. Uh, who said, they any way you could come over to my house? And I was like, wait a minute, this is Christina and I'm just some engineer. Why would she possibly want to talk to me? And she said, because I'm a singer, not a business person. I need some help with a business idea ha I have. And everyone says, you're the go-to guy. So my advice to you guys is you need to be the go-to guy or the go-to girl for the people you want to call you. Today, my business partner is Pitbull. I don't know what kind of music you guys listen to, but I remember the first time Pitbull called and he said, I need some help with something. So when you become the person that can solve a problem for the people that you want to be around, you can go anywhere you wanna go. And I remember one night going out on stage, all of that, when I told you I had that first dream of being the person producing the concert. That was uh, at an Elton John concert when I was a kid. And I remember years later, uh, backstage one night at a concert that I was producing with Elton John and Elton John saying to me, uh, hey, are you gonna go out there and introduce me? And I got to go out on stage in front of 25 or 30,000 people. All my friends are out there. And I remember thinking, I can't believe it's me this time. I went from the audience to the stage and the key was because I figured out this is what I learned, figured out that you have to have something of value to the people you wanna be around. And the thing of value is solve a problem they have, which you figure out by studying their industry and asking a lot of questions. So that's my secret formula for getting anywhere you wanna go. And I'll, I'll, I'll sort of wrap this up by telling you kind of a uh, uh, really cool moment for me. Um, I, like I said, I'm not a singer or a dancer or anything, I'm a business person but I provide the business solutions uh, for people in the industry that I dreamed of being in. Um, and uh, we produced uh, a music album, we produced a jazz album. And I was the business, there's two kinds of producers in music. There's uh, the music producer, and then there's producers that put the whole deal together, all the business side of securing artists and studios and marketing for your album. And I was helping on the business side and we produced a jazz album in a uh, a few years ago, uh, we won a Grammy, and it was one of the coolest moments of my whole life uh, because there I was in the red carpet of the Grammys all dressed up, and we won a Grammy, and I was standing there in the red carpet, and all the, the paparazzi were yelling at me, and they were yelling, Jeff, how do you feel right now? And guys, I remember saying out loud, <laughs> the Grammy red carpet, I said, this is the dream of software engineers everywhere. And all the people were like, what? What are you talking about? And I said, never mind, inside joke. And I remember thinking that everybody told me no. Everybody told me, you're a software engineer, you can't do that. But my message is to, to you, all the young people out there, is you can do anything you want to do, even if everybody around you tells you no, by following the formula we just talked about. Make yourself valuable to people in the world. Recently, I applied the same thing to the sports industry. I said, man, I love sports and I wish that I could be around people in professional sports. So guess what I did? I went and studied the business of sports because I'm not the player. And I made a list of all the problems that they have to solve on the business side of sports. And I crossed off the ones I didn't think I could do and I circled the ones I thought I could do. And then I sent a lot of cold emails and, and asked a lot of questions and learned the business of sports until I got to the point where I was valuable to people in that industry. And in fact, it was a, a really cool day. Again, you may not be American baseball fans per se, but I just remember a day that my phone rang and it was a baseball player from the New York Yankees, a guy named Derek Jeter. And, and Derek called and said, Jeff, I have this idea, I wanna buy a baseball team and I need your help. And I was a huge fan of this uh, five-time world champion in baseball. And I said, why are you calling me? And he said, cause you're the go-to guy on the business of sports and I need your help. So 
uh, Marcelo, that's kind of the story I wanted to share today. The wisdom was I wanted to go places that everybody told me I could never go, and they were right, because you can't get there unless there's a reason that the people who already are in that business need you. And so I said, if I could figure out how to make them want to call me by having something they need, I'll bet there's no place I can't be. And that's how we launched. Even later, we launched a uh, movie company uh, and we made movies and then we did a TV company. In fact, last year we won an Emmy Award for a television show we produced. But the only reason I was able to do that was all the nights I stayed up studying the television industry and trying to figure out how I could be valuable to people in their, the industry. So dream big, all of you. Dr big dreams are important. If you have a small dream and that's all you dream of and you achieve it, you haven't done much. If you have a big dream and you only get halfway there, it's still gonna take you someplace amazing. But remember that you have to work as hard as your dream is big. Sorry, yes, you have to work as hard as your dream is big. My friends would always say, oh, Jeff, you're so lucky. And I would always sit there and think, you know, it seems that the harder I work, the luckier I get. It's not luck, guys. It's if you're willing to work hard enough and study and learn. By the way, the main reason you're in school, it's not necessarily the things you're learning. What you're learning in school is you're learning how to learn, which because I was a good learner, I was able to go enter these new businesses and start new industries. So with that, Marcelo, I hope that was wisdom people can use, and maybe we have time for a question or two. Oh, that's fantastic, because uh, you're going to first principles there, instead of just uh, you know, uh, giving narrow, specific cases, which is often what people can share. You're really uh, deconstructing it down to the lowest level, and it's applicable to all different industries. Uh, I would um, have uh, not necessarily questions, more like an addendum to what uh, sure. you share. Uh, in terms of um, as a teenager, of course, you can study a lot um, on top of what you're already doing at school to learn about an industry, but no one is going to give you a job to raise finance for a movie. Or so there, There's a certain age group in which it, it starts becoming feasible to do what you did and it did so well. But as a teenager, uh, if you want to get involved with the movie industry, and I'm saying that as someone who's been going to the Cannes Film Festival for 20 years in a row. I mean, the first time that I missed was this year because I didn't have it. Um, sure. How can you get involved, right? And how can you become an intern working remotely to help the, um, no, the script? Okay, no, I, I, that, I think that's a great question. And that is wisdom I wish I had when I was a teenager. Because you know what I get now? I, I mentioned that you have to reach out to people in that industry even though you don't know them and you have to be prepared for a lot of people to say no. But if you persist, somebody says yes. And you know why they say yes? One time a person said to me, you remind me of me when I was your age. That's why I took your call. He said, because I really wanted to get into the movie business when I was your age and no one would answer my call. That's why I'm answering your call. So somebody will reply, don't give up. But I get now, in fact, in fact, I literally got one, uh, what is today, Saturday, I got one on Thursday. I got a teenager from high school that reached out to me on LinkedIn, somebody I've never met, and said, I really want to learn about the film industry. Is there any way you could mentor me virtually, just online? Is there any way we could do a Zoom call now and then and just chat? So the answer is, you can reach out and, and if you're not during COVID, there's less production, or if you're physically not in the same city or the same country, reach out to people that you could learn from and just ask them, right? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, so you got to try. Even if a bunch of people say no, somebody might say, yes, I'd be happy to mentor you. And later, when they're, if you're in the same geographical location, I've invited young people out to movie sets uh, before and TV sets so that they could observe what we were doing and learn. So somebody will give you a chance, even as a teenager, to be an apprentice or an intern or just online mentoring so you can learn from the people who are actually doing what you wanna do one day when, when it's your turn. Or, or then decide for yourself as a teenager that that was my dream, now I know what it really looks like, you know how hard it is, is not my dream anymore. At least the uh, 
diminish the disappointment um, instead of studying five years something that they are not going to enjoy doing for the rest of their lives they learn very early on that they need to look for a different path in life and I, I think I, the, oh sorry yeah so they, the fact that they'll be learning how truly passionate they really are about that industry in your case you know all your passions uh, uh, bore your fruit but um, uh, and lots of um, kids they have this dream you know they they want to know uh, more about particle physics and uh, they study really hard they try to get to mit and all of a sudden they go like yeah this is not for me and if <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that that's before. a really important point because learning what you don't like is just as valuable as learning what you like I uh, know a teen that wanted to become a veterinarian. And her plan was, this is somebody I was mentoring, uh, to go to college for four years and then go away to veterinary school for more years. So it was going to be many years and lots of money. And when we were talking, I said, I'm going to introduce you to a veterinarian that I happen to know that lives in the city you live in. And I want you to just ask if you could do a little after school or Saturday interning, just come in. She didn't last one day, Marcelo. She wanted to be a vet because she loves pets. But when she got there on the first day, what she discovered is veterinarians have to work with injured animals, dying animals, sick animals, and it broke her heart uh, to see that. So after one day there, she said, I'm glad I didn't go to school for six years to become a vet because I can see now I could never do this job. So you are correct. Gaining experience young can help you learn what you like and what you don't like, which is a very important decision as well. Oh, it's fantastic. So Jeff, I don't want to take more of your time. This is such a great session. And I, I learned a lot myself. Uh, so thank you for uh, inspiring me and um, you know, reminding me uh, of uh, my uh, younger self and uh, mm -hmm. the passion of dreams. Um, you know, uh, let me know if I can uh, do anything to uh, support your work. And that includes like, you know, sending teenagers our way so that they can participate and uh, become part of the community. And, um, you know, I, I wish you um, uh, a wonderful weekend, but also that you stay healthy during these hard times. Because here in Europe, uh, the, um, the pandemic is getting pretty bad. So I'm, I hope that you guys are going to be fine in the US. Thank you very much. Uh, wishing you the same. And yes, I've already, just because I posted on my social media that I was joining you today, have a lot of teenagers that I will be sending your way that ask to learn more about the organization and for the teens that are listening. Um, even though I can't get back to you super quickly, I'm just Jeff at jeffhoffman.com and, and I love hearing what teens around the world are thinking about and dreaming about these days. Thank you for having me. Oh, wonderful. Take care and all the best. Bye-bye.